Hey everyone, Dr. Zio here again, and today we're here to talk about Power Rangers Cosmic Fury, Episode 8, Switching Sides. And as always, we'll start off with our summary, likes, dislikes, and then our conclusion. Now, as the name implies, this actually isn't about Ollie at all, but rather Mucus and Slither from Dino Fury Seasons 1 and 2, the other ones who are switching sides. So we'll get to them here in just a second. I like the episode, of course, because I I love Mucus and Slither. They're great. But let's go ahead and talk about everything that happened here in this episode. And basically, most of it takes place within the, I guess, HQ for the Resistance. Basically, as we saw at the end of the last episode, they've captured Squillia. So now they're just trying to figure out, well, so Zato, Amelia, and Tarek are all trying to mind meld with her to get more information out of her and basically try to figure out where Lord Zed is and where the location of the Tricera Dino Head statue is. Because in the process of liberating Japan, New Zealand, and other places around the world, they did talk to Dr. Akana in Osaka, who floated an idea that because Ollie's Ranger energy seems to be corrupted, Maybe if they destroy the Tricera Dino Hedge statue, then it'll sever his link to the Morphin Grid and he won't be corrupted anymore and he'll be good again. So they're trying to get this information out of Squillia, but unfortunately this isn't working out as they planned because Squillia didn't really pay attention during Lord Zed's meetings. On the flip side of things, speaking of Lord Zed, Lord Zed and Bajelia are talking because Bajelia knows that Squillia got captured by the Rangers. She's also reporting that Earth has been liberated and various... Ranger teams are out there, you know, liberating their own sections. They're basically out and about and doing Ranger things now. And Lord Zed does not care. He says the Earth is not really part of his plan. It doesn't matter to him because Scrozzle has floated the idea of using the Morphin Master Energy from the Master Captivator for some sort of plan. They haven't disclosed exactly what the plan is, but we know that it's going to factor into his final plan. But Julia is like, okay, whatever. I'm still going to go to Earth because this looks like a PR disaster and I want to get my daughter back. So she uses up, she ends up using Inkworth, her butler, who I haven't mentioned up until now because he hasn't really been worth mentioning. Like, dude's been a walking doormat anytime he appears and he just isn't an interesting character. But basically, Inkworth searches for Bajelia's foam and finds the location of the resistance. So back on Earth, Ion is actually, you know, closing up shop at his Ion's Cafe because he can't really do anything at the shop until all of this havoc is taken care of. So he's packing things up. And in the process, you know, as he's bringing things out of his cafe, he sees Mucus and Slyther entertaining people. He mind melds with them to figure out the fact that, okay, they're actually good now and here's what they've been up to. So he takes them back to Resistance HQ. Everyone's not too happy about it, but Tarek, Amelia, and Zato also mind meld with Slyther and Mucus to figure out, okay, they actually are good and they're not lying. And in the process, Mucus makes a really big deal about the fact that she doesn't like being human. She is disgusted by her human form, as we all saw in Dino Fury Season 2. And so, Zato takes it upon himself to use his newfound uh, magic abilities to turn her back into a mushroom and she's super happy about this and i'm happy for it too but of course this use of magic energy makes Zato pass out so solon takes him back to the base meanwhile bajillia has arrived with uh what what two more uh squid drills so the girls go fight the squid drills while the boys stay there to guard squillia while the girls are off dealing with the squid drills bajillia and sentinels come to storm the resistance hq they end up freeing Squillia, and then they all get into a fight with the boys and Slyther and Tarek versus Bajillia. They get the upper hand, then the girls pop in to help out, and they all team up to destroy Bajillia and Squillia. Although, there's a little tentacle that kind of swarms or squirms its way off screen, so who knows what that's about. But basically, now Slyther transforms into Bajillia, and then Mucus is acting as Slyther's lawyer? They end up conning Inkworth into taking them to Eltar, and then they send information over to the Rangers, tell them, hey, this is where Lord Zed's base is, and Mucus and Scyther do end up destroying the Triceria Dino Henge statue. In the process, though, they do get found out, and they get captured by Lord Zed and his crew, and Ali basically suggests to capture them rather than destroy them for reasons. It'd be better to torture them than it would be to actually destroy them. Now on the flip side thing, back at the Dino Henge base, 
The Rangers are wondering about, you know, why is Zato keep passing out? Why hasn't he woken up? This is longer. He's been asleep longer than he usually is. And Ion and Solo are basically trying to keep the secret. When Zato ends up waking up, he's like, okay, they all stop. Let me tell them what's really going on. He comes clean, tells them you know, what's going on with the Morphin Master or the magic energy within him and that he doesn't really have much time left. But they all decide, okay, that's okay. We'll work with what we have. We will find a way to reverse this once we get the Morphin Masters out of their prison. And that's the end of the episode. But let's go ahead and talk about my likes for the episode. First and foremost, there was a transmission from Billy with Alpha in the background. He's basically in the command center now. And Alpha's in the background doing his little thing. He's not voiced, so that's slightly disappointing, but not at all surprising. He basically tells them that they were able to get the Mighty Morphin Rangers out of the Angel Grove prisons. And Zack's hip-hop kiddo confused the Zentinels, which is absolutely funny. Absolutely funny. And next, they're off to Reefside to help liberate that section. I guess because Tommy and Kat still live in Reefside. And a nice little, that's I guess a nice little dino within a reference. But again, I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. And then just using the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers once and always command center set. Just for one more thing before the franchise ends. Is really good because I would not have expected it. I mean the fact that it's still there makes a lot of sense because... The two, the Once and Always and Cosmic Fury filmed just like a week or two apart, so it makes sense that all that stuff is still there, but them actually putting it to good use is really nice. Also, there was a very good trans rights moment here in this episode. Basically, like I mentioned before, Mucus does not like her human form. She's despised by it, she's not comfortable in that body, and Zato basically says that everyone should be comfortable in their own body. I think that's before or after he turns Mucus back into a mushroom. And not only is that a good use of his magic, but it's a nice sly way to get like a trans, a pro trans uh, rights movement message into Power Rangers without kicking up a fuss from pearl clutching Republicans or pearl clutching conservatives. Also, Zato and Tarek touching Mucus and Scyther, and then Amelia touching Tarek and Zato while they all mind meld together was a nice little scene. Like it was cool seeing them all mind meld together as one unit like that's dope we don't really get to see that ever so yeah i like that a lot also we find out squillia's full name it is squillia char livia nair and her mother called her by her full government name when she popped in and saw that squillia was asleep due to the sleepy cups so i thought that was funny having her call her out by her full name you didn't ex you, don't, you don't expect a, a ranger not a ranger but a villain to have one middle name, let alone two middle names in Power Rangers. And then speaking of that whole fight section, again, great fight in Cosmic Fury. Scyther helped out, which I always love Scyther's, you know, antics when he fights his duck, dodge, attack, sweep the leg, that kind of stuff. That's always funny. And Tarek, just like last episode, was showing out. My man was putting in that work and God bless that man. God bless Tarek, because watching Tarek fight is just so pleasing. Like, he's a great fighter, and he just makes me happy anytime he does anything. Also, the end of that fight was really cool. You know, seeing the Rangers all taking turns using different attacks to take care of Bajillia and Squillia was cool. And the way Bajillia and Squillia kind of lit up before exploding, also cool. We'll talk about the explosion here in a second. But the last like I have for this episode was the fact that Mucus, when they said that you're going to be her lawyer, or you're going to be Slyther's lawyer, she said, Mucus Mucusin, mushroom at law. And that was funny. That was just... Mucus is precious. Mucus needs to be protected. Be, mucus needs to be protected at all costs. At all costs. I don't care what you say, okay? Mucus is the best. But let's talk about my dislikes for the episode. This isn't a, really a dislike per se, just a minor little nitpick. And it's that I kind of wish... Zato, instead of making Mucus human, had given her shape-shifting abilities. Now, we don't know the limitations to Zato's newfound magical abilities. We don't know if he can actually do that. But it still would have been a nice thing to do if he could do that. Just so that Mucus and Scyther are able to go back to their circus things. You know, once everything starts cooling down and Mucus doesn't have to, you know, go around as her mushroom self. Because, again, remember... When that she popped up initially, she was on camera in back in Dino Fury Season 1. So people are aware of the fact that that form that Mucus has is a Sporex beast. So 
I don't know. I don't want her facing any sort of discrimination. I just want to make life as easy as possible for her. So maybe as when she's out in public, she's in her human form. But when she's out in private, she's just living life as the mushroom she is. But on to more serious dislikes. Let's go ahead and talk about that explosion. So Bajilia and Squilia exploding highlights a big issue I've had so far with Cosmic Fury that I haven't actually mentioned yet. And that's the CGI effects. So when monsters explode, it looks more like a balloon popping. It doesn't have the pizzazz of your typical Sentai, even classic Power Rangers explosions, where you'll see the villains start to spark or electricity start radiating off of them before they fall over down, side, front, back, whatever. And then they explode in some glorious explosion. Like, I miss that. I miss that a lot, and I really hope that that's how they end up taking care of Lord Zed when that time comes, whether it's the next episode or the 10th episode, but I hope that he goes down in a blaze of glory. Like they really make use of the last explosion that this franchise is going to see for Lord knows how long. But yeah, I really do wish that they brought back those classic style of explosions because those that's part of what Power Rangers is when it comes to practical practical effects for me at least but yeah that's really all i have to say about this episode conclusion wise great episode we got to see mucus and slither back again we got to see the debut of jennifer on as a mother to some kid who wanted ions uh who wanted some flocking cake and ion actually gave her the recipe for flocking cake because he doesn't know when you know, Ion's Cafe is going to open up again, so nice to see Jennifer Onye who finally make her debut, even if it is in a small role for only, what, less than a minute, maybe a minute and a half, something like that. And, yeah, good fight between Bajilia, Squilia, and the Rangers. Another good Megazord fight. Again, yeah, a good, a good episode all around, and I can't wait to see how these last two episodes play out because things are really sparking up. Things are really, really sparking up, and I want to see what Lord Zed's master plan is with the Morphin Master Energy. But until then, I'm Dr. Zio. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Share the video, like the video, share the audio, like the audio, rate it, comment, all that good stuff. Subscribe because it does help with the various algorithms out there. But until next time, hope you all have a good night, day, wherever you are. I'm Dr. Zio, and I'll see you all in the next one. Ciao.